Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by an American poet and translator named A.E. Stallings. She was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize just last year for her book, Like, and I've read a poem, uh, maybe two poems from that book. Today's poem is from a previous book, a previous collection of poems called Olives. came out from Tri-Quarterly Books a couple of years ago, and uh, in it, it has a poem called Listening to Peter and the Wolf with Jason Aged Three. This is how it goes. Eyes wide open, grinning ear to ear, balanced between the thrill of fear and fear. He clutches at my skirt to keep me near and will not let me leave him by himself in the living room where Peter and the wolf emerges from the speakers on the shelf. He likes Peter's jaunty swing of strings, the reedy waddle of the duck, the wings that flute up in the tree. But still he clings, even though for now it's just the cat picking its sneaky way through sharp and flat. He isn't frightened of a clarinet and laughs at grandfather's bluster and bassoon, but keeps his ear out for another tune and the shadowy edge of the wood and coming soon. Where's the wolf? He asks me every chance he gets, and I explain each circumstance, though it's not as if he's heard it only once. You'd think he'd know by now. Deep in the wood or under the tree or sent away for good to the zoo, I say, and think he's understood and weary of the question and the classic I ask him where the wolf is. With grave logic, he answers me. The wolf is in the music. And so it is. Just then, out of the gloom, the cymbal menaces, the French horns loom, and the music is loose. The music's in the room. (laughs) I love this poem, and it might be because my kids absolutely love Peter and the Wolf. I think it was Leonard Bernstein who who um, famously produced a, a recording of this that you can you can still listen to. I'm sure, probably even on YouTube or Spotify or something like that. And and each of the different characters are represented by a different instrument. And so as the drama is happening and the story is being told, the the music is sort of accompanying it. Well, really, the music is telling the story, as the poem suggests. And my kids absolutely just adored this. They still do. But I remember them being about three or four when they first discovered it, my older boys. And we listened to it over and over and over again in the car in particular. So the things that she's explaining here are, you know, this this scenario is, I guess, a little personal for me. But I'm sure that many of you out there have listened to this, especially those who listen to this podcast with your families. And if you haven't, then you need to check it out. Um, Make this poem make a little bit more sense, but also uh, you'll have a great time together. I particularly love... The phrase, which is in parentheses, even though for now, it's just the cat picking its sneaky way through sharp and flat. So I love the wordplay of the sharp and flat bit there. And it's an example of where just as there's um, music is loose, the music's in the room, she says, the wolf is in the music. You know, she's, of course, talking about Leonard Bernstein's, you know, all his performers and, and the music they're making. But there's also music loose in this poem, there's a musicality to it. Uh, Stallings being a formalist, you know, really, a, it really sings in her poetry because she sort of allows the forms to guide her. So the rhymes here, you know, they're, they're persistent. They're uh, in your face in a sense because you know each each stanza has just you know the same ending, the same end rhyme: ear, fear, near, himself, wolf, shelf, strings, wing, clings, and so forth. And, um, you know, she flexes a little bit with them, like cat flat and clarinet, but those, the, the form guides the poems music so much. And she just kind of, she just kind of embraces that much like a performer embracing the melody. That rhyme is sort of the, the melody that holds everything together. Um, and so, you know, I, I love that about this poem and the, and the way that it engages with its, you know, original source text, so to speak. So once more, here it is listening to Peter and the Wolf with Jason aged three. Eyes wide open, grinning ear to ear, balanced between the thrill of fear and fear. He clutches at my skirt to keep me near and will not let me leave him by himself in the living room where Peter and the Wolf emerges from the speakers on the shelf. He likes Peter's jaunty swing of strings the reedy waddle of the duck, 
the wings that flew up in the tree. But still he clings, even though for now it's just the cat picking its sneaky way through sharp and flat. He isn't frightened of a clarinet and laughs at grandfather's bluster and bassoon, but keeps his ear out for another tune at the shadowy edge of the wood and coming soon. Where's the wolf? He asks me every chance he gets, and I explain each circumstance, though it's not as if he's only heard it once. You'd think he'd know by now. Deep in the wood, or under the tree, or sent away for good to the zoo, I say, and think he's understood, and weary of the question and the classic, I ask him where the wolf is. With grave logic, he answers me, The wolf is in the music. And so it is. Just then, out of the gloom, the symbol menaces, the French horns loom, and the music is loose. The music's in the room. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. I'll be back tomorrow with another poem for you.